idolatry. Recently, we have been speaking a lot about idolatry. The reason why is God hates idolatry, and we as children of God need to ensure we are not involved in the practice of idolatry knowingly or unknowingly. Colossians 3 verses 5 and 6 Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. According to Galatians 5 verse 20, idolatry is one of the works of the flesh. Idolatry is an offshoot of the fallen nature of man. It is as old as the fall of man. Apostle Paul admonished the Colossian church to mortify their flesh in order to overcome the sin of idolatry. That is, they must crucify their flesh if they would be victorious over that awful practice. God hates idolatry. Apostle Paul said that the wrath of God came upon the children of disobedience because of their sins of idolatry. It is amazing that the sin of idolatry is likened to the sin of covetousness. A covetous person is an idolater, and there is no denying that. Any person that is greedy of the good things of this life will definitely fall into idolatry. A greedy person disregards their soul and is willing to do whatever it takes to feed their greed, to feed their covetousness. They will step on others. They will sell their soul. They will make a deal with the devil, all to feed their greed. What a lot of people need to know about the demonic kingdom of Satan is that spirits work together. They have better team working skills than some church members. That is why I am saying that the spirit of greed and covetousness is closely likened with the spirit of idolatry. Another example of this is the spirit of lust is closely linked with the spirit of adultery and the spirit of fornication. Another example is the spirit of anger is closely likened with the spirit of murder. Evil spirits and demons love, love to operate in gangs. Jesus told us this in Matthew 12 verses 43 to 45. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The spirit of greed and covetousness are close cousins with the spirit of idolatry. The sin of idolatry has long transformed from bowing to images and offering sacrifices to strange gods. A Christian can be an idolater if he or she is given over to greed. Greedy people can do anything to get anything. They will never cease pursuing wealth, even if the way to acquire it is sinful and against the plan of God. Do you recall that the Bible says the root of all evil is the love of money? Those that would be rich at all costs will never be anything better than idolaters because money will turn out to be their God. Money is a wonderful thing. I encourage you to go work and start that business. Earn your money, work long hours. We live in an economic society and we need money to survive. But do not let money compromise your eternity. Do not let money be your God. I'm not saying to spend seven days a week in church, no. I'm not even saying to spend three hours in prayer every day. What I am saying is make God a priority. Wake up and start the day with God and seek His face. The money you are chasing will chase you. Matthew 6 verse 33 But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Whatever robs God of your passion and your affection is your idol. Your children can turn out to be your idols if they rob God of the love you ought to have for Him. A lady had been attending church faithfully with her husband for many years. They were honestly model Christians. They had prayed and prayed and prayed for a child for many years, and finally conceived and gave birth to a child. Then they stopped coming to church for over a year, and the follow-up team tried to contact her, but to no avail. Then one day the pastor saw her in a grocery store and asked her why she had stopped coming to church. And her reason was, 
I just want to spend more time with my child. Imagine that. The gift God gave her became her idol. Your spouse can also turn out to be your idol if you love him or her above God. A scribe came to tempt Jesus in Mark 12 verses 29 to 30, asking him which of the commandments is the first. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. There are no two personalities to be served. Only God deserves to be worshipped. First of all, and above all things, we must love the Lord. Every believer is expected to love God more than anything else. A husband is expected to love his wife, but that must not be at the expense of his love for God. And the same principle goes for wives. You see, God will fight anything that usurps your love for him. The reason is because he is jealous. He hates idolatry. Apostle Paul admonished the Corinthian Christians in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 14 to flee from idolatry. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. In other words, run for your life. Isaiah 42 verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. God will not share his position with anyone else. Idolatry is not just practiced by unbelievers. There are Christians that practice it. For instance, if a Christian is taken over by greed or covetousness, he or she is an idolater. The devil only presents idolatry to us in a way that we would hardly call it what it is. Today, technology is another idol that many people worship, and if they are not cautious, it may lead them to hell. That TV screen you spend hours in front of watching, for some people, it is their god. There are believers that cannot do without their cell phones, even when they are in the presence of God for just two hours. But they can do without God for a week or two. Seriously, you see people in church texting, scrolling through social media, in church but you can go a whole week without touching your Bible. Backsliding begins with a dusty Bible. If you find it is comfortable to live without studying the Word of God and you are at ease without prayers and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, then you probably have an idol. If not physical, then somewhere in your heart. Examine your life. What or who is your idol today? What or who is the main recipient of your love and affection today? God hates idolatry, and he punishes those who practice it. Although the Israelites are the elect of God, he never spared them each time they went into idolatry. Moses warned the Israelites in Deuteronomy 4 verses 15 and 16 with the following words, Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves. And you make a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. The Israelites disobeyed this command many times, and God punished them each time. Usually, he would allow their enemies to overpower them and torment them until they were greatly afflicted and they acknowledged their sins. Unfortunately, there are believers who still bow down to images and revere them. This act is unbiblical. It is a form of idolatry. There are believers who are to bow to the pictures of their pastors which they hung in their rooms. This act is wrong, unbiblical, and idolatrous too. 1 Samuel 15 verse 23 For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Prophet Samuel equated stubbornness to idolatry. This implies that any believer who is rebellious to church authorities is an idolater. Idolatry has several implications in a Christian life and it is one of the leading sins which the devil is using against the body of Christ, especially in this end time. 
You need to examine your heart to know if anything is more highly placed than God in your life. If you find anything, you must deliberately dethrone it, putting it where it should belong and not where God ought to be. Another form of idolatry which we need to be careful about is putting our trust in people. God will never share his glory with any man. God and a man cannot be having their ways at the same time. The Bible says that woe to anyone who puts his or her strength in a mortal man. The reason is because it's only God's trust that can never fail. If we therefore shift our trust from God to a man, then we are doing nothing but idolatry. Idolatry irritates God. It grieves his heart and makes us the recipients of divine wrath. Therefore, we must desist from all appearances of idolatry. God bless you.